What is up guys? I'm Julius. I hope you're doing good. Today I'll be teaching you three ways that you can create lower thirds in Adobe Premiere Pro. But without further ado, let's get started. So I am here in Premiere, where I prepared a sequence with a color mat in it. And the color mat is not necessary, but I just thought it would be nice to have some color because this would be a little bit of a longer video. And I didn't want to like stare at a blank black background. But anyways, let's get started. So I'm going to come over here to this wrench here. And I'm gonna click on transparent secret. Oh, sorry, safe margins. Just so we get these bars here. And basically, the lower third is a text object down here in this uh, left bottom corner here. And a good rule of thumb is you can place the text like in here. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna take my text tool here and I'm gonna write sample. And we're gonna write text like so. And as you can see here, we get these two text on separate layers. And for now, I'm just, I think I just wanna leave like this text like it is. But I am going to come into Essential Graphics and I'm just going to center it real quick. Even though it's not really doing anything, I just like to start from the center. So I am going to bring the text to the left here by opening my effects control and moving the position. So somewhere around here, I think 200 is a nice thing to go with. Same thing for the one above. And now we want to decide which text to have on top and which one to have in the bottom. So I think I want the sample to be in the bottom. So I'm going to pull this down all the way into the corner. Probably 1960. That's pretty nice. Next up, I'm going to take the text. So drag that down and place that a little, little bit above something like that. I think that looks fine. And now I'm going to go to now a timeline to where I want our animation to end. And I want it to end after one second. So I'm going to go one second forward. I did that by just holding down shift and pressing the right arrow key six times where you move five frames at a time so the animation will take one second and basically what i want to do here is keyframe the position and the opacity of the text layer the top layer here so i have enable keyframes here because this is where we want the animation to stop i'm going to go back to the start here and i'm going to move the position a little bit something like this i think could be nice and also then turn down the opacity so we just got this thing going on now here it doesn't look good but we will fix this for this bottom layer here i am not gonna change with the anything with the position but i'm just gonna animate the opacity a little bit something like that so now we already have a very basic lower third going on here what i'm gonna do now is select all of our keyframes here i click temporal interpolation ease in temporal interpolation ease out and what you will see now that we get is this smooth curve instead of like this like a linear graph now i'm gonna go to the middle of the animation that is 15 frames like so and i'm just gonna open first the position slider here what you will see here is you will get these little things you can pull on that way you can just manipulate the graph a little bit i think something like this could look nice it looks really nice it just makes the movement a lot more smooth i'm gonna do the same with the opacity here a little bit uh, yeah i think i will do the same thing with the opacity here just trying to match it with the, the graph above. Of course, don't forget this one here in the bottom. And here, just do what you want to do. There is no mistakes. You can also just do the same as me. This is just like an example, right? So we got this thing going on here now. That's nice. That is the first example. And of course, let's just say we have it running for one second. Then of course, to fade it out, you could do the, the exact same thing, right? Simple, but absolutely beautiful. Let me show you another lower third you can do. Again here, I'm just going to create a tile by selecting my text tool. I'm going to write sample. And then of course, text again here on two separate layers. This one would be a little bit more complicated. So I am again going to center them here and I'm going to position them here where I want them to be. Okay, let's take this one at 219.60. And this one 200. And let's put it down here a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is first animate the sample here. Again, I'm going to do a one second animation. So I'll go one second forward, enable keyframes on the position. I go to the start, I drag it out of the screen this time. I'm animating the position now and not the opacity. So now we got this thing going on here. So now we kind of like slide in, right? But we keep going any further. I just want to like play around with the keyframes a little bit here. Let's give it the ease in and the ease out. Make the keyframe smooth. Something like that. I would like that. 
All right. So now that we got this thing going on here, I'm going to create a mask. I'm going to take the shapes on there and just create a shape, something like this, right? Doesn't matter too much right now. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. I'm going to go to fit and let's do 150. Press H to move around. Let's just find this clip here. And I want to kind of line the mask, uh, the shape up here with the text, something like that. I'm going to click on this thing here and I am going to click on mask with shape. So what does this do? It's actually pretty nice because basically what I'm trying to do is I want this text here to be visible only when it is outside the mask. How do we do that? We have to play around with the layers here. We have to have the sample on top and the text underneath the shape. And then we need to invert the mask like so. So basically what this does is when the text is inside the shape, when the text is inside the shape, it will and not be visible, of course. But how do we make sure that this sample text here does not go out of the, you know, the uh, our box here? Well, it doesn't matter, right? Because it follows uh, the, the, the sample here as above. But what we can do here is actually pin it to the sample. This will just make sure that the mask just follows our animation. But then we get another problem here, right? This text is visible when the mask moves. We're actually not going to do that. We're just going to leave the mask here for now. And what we're going to do here when the sample animation ends is we are going to animate the position of our text. We have a keyframe, go forward. Six keyframes. Oh, maybe just, sorry, uh, 30 frames a minute, but maybe just do 20 frames load up on the y-axis, something like that. Select both, temporal interpolation, ease in, temporal interpolation, ease out. Go to the center here. And just like speed it up a little bit. And here I'm again gonna zoom in because I want the mask to be absolutely perfect with the text or as perfect as can be. something like that i think that's pretty nice take a look at what we created now it's another beautiful lower third and of course i'm not going to show like the how you can fade it out again just to save a little bit of time on the video but you will basically just mirror the effect right with the text going into the sample and then the sample going out all right let me show you the third way of creating a lower third that i, I like to do so again i'm going to take my type tool here oops Type tool here. I'm gonna write sample and then text on a two separate layers. And I'm just gonna like format it a little bit and get it into place. Something like that. What else can we do here? I wanna freestyle a little bit. Let's use some shapes. I'm gonna take my uh, rectangle tool here and I'm gonna draw a square which encompasses both our shapes. Something like that. I think that looks nice. And what I wanna do here with this shape is I wanna take a little bit to the right just so it goes out something like that and i want to pull it beneath our text now that is nice let me zoom in a little bit see how that looks like this this is just like freestyling right you can make some nice stuff just sometimes when you play around so i created this now what i want to do is i want to duplicate this layer here this shape pull this new shape here let's call it shape 2 above let us change the color a little bit to some Thing like that yeah that's nice and let us change the divide the height by two to something like 95 or something like that oops that's not how i want to do it i actually want to zoom in again i think i want to change the height manually just by pulling in the shape something like that Let's also maybe shorten a little bit onto one side just to get some, some design going on. So now we basically have this thing here. Let me hide the safe margins here so you can see how it looks. And as you can see, it actually looks pretty nice, right? But now I think it's time to animate it. I think we can make some really beautiful stuff here. So I am going to take the big shape here, shape one, at the start of our clip. And I'm going to pull the position out. Something like that. Enable keyframes. Go forward. 30 frames again. That's nice. And of course, then just slide it in like so. I'm going to do the same thing for the one beneath. But this one I'm going to offset by 5 frames. So the animation will first start 
once this other one already has been going for five seconds. I think they could look really cool. And again, this one will last for 30 frames. That's nice. But what about the text? Let's also offset the text a little bit by five seconds. So everything will be offset. Again, have this one go for 30 seconds. And I've set the last one with five seconds here. Again, have it go for 30 seconds. So we get something like this. I mean, that looks pretty goofy right now, but we will fix it. I will go to the center of all keyframes, easy ease them and play around with a little bit of on the graph editor. Not too much, just smoothen it out a little bit. Try to take a look at this one. Now, that's pretty beautiful. And of course, when you want to pull it out, you just mirror the animation and do it backwards. But if you didn't want to spend a lot of time on creating these lower thirst from scratch, well, I have some good news for you. I have partnered up with um, AEJuice, which is a provider of plugins and presets for Adobe After Effects and Adobe Premiere Pro. And I have a link down in the description where if you buy through it, I get a, a small commission of the sales. So if you want to support the channel, that's a great way to do it. But let me show you how some of the lower third presets work. Once you have bought the uh, title preset, for example, or their full, uh, full everything bundle and installed it, We'll just go into your Premiere, go into Window, Extensions, and a Juice Pack Manager 4. Once this loads, you will have to log in, etc. But it shouldn't be that difficult. So, the pack which I will be using for this example of their presets is called Titles. So, if you're just interested in Lower Third, you could buy that one. But this one, this package title, has a bunch of stuff. Has box titles, brushes, callouts, etc. But this video is all about lower thirds. So let's try using one. I think this one looks pretty cool. And basically, once you found one you like, you just drag and drop it and just let it do its thing while it's importing the plugin or the, the preset. Sorry. All right. So the preset is loaded. And let's just take a look how it looks. It's pretty nice, but we want to play a little bit around with it. I'm again going to enable my safe margins here and I'm just going to get my essential graphics panel here again. And in here you have a ton of customization. So what I want to do first is change the text. I want to change it from Sarah Davis to Julius Sorensen. Why not? That's my name. Just like that. It's updated, right? Let's change the scale a little bit. The entire text box scale. I think I want to have it be like 50-ish, maybe 70. It looks nice. And I guess I kind of want to fit it to the corner here. Something like that here. I'm just freestyling here a little bit. Again, I want to line it up with the corner here. I think that looks nice. And then let's change some of the colors here. I want to maybe have it be like this dark orange here. And I want to have the text be, I guess. I don't know, black, uh, maybe this, this gray here of the Adobe thing would look nice. So just like that, I created an insanely beautiful preset or a lower third, sorry, from scratch. And I mean, this looks incredibly good. And as I said, I have a link down below, a small commission of the sales bought through that link goes to me. If you want to buy anything from AE Juice, I would really appreciate it if you would lose that link. But anyways, that was all I had for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, then please like this video. Also consider dropping a comment, letting me know which type of video or tutorial you'd like to see next. And also please subscribe to my channel. It really means a lot. Thank you so much. But anyways, guys, take care.